Hello, and welcome to Excel for Chemical Engineers. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to solve differential equations using the Euler method. For those who need a refresher on what a differential equation is, it's anything that has a differential term. So for example, dCa dt is equal to minus K1Ca. This equation is separable and therefore very easy to solve analytically. If I know the initial condition, what Ca is at time zero, I can simply separate variables, integrate, and then plug in my initial condition to solve for the constant of integration. However, there are some equations that you might encounter in chemical engineering that are not so easy to solve analytically. For example, the Navier-Stokes equations, shown here in cylindrical coordinates. Very difficult, if not impossible, to solve unless you make a list of simplifying assumptions, and even then, oftentimes, you'll have to resort to a numerical solution method, such as the Euler method. So here's how the Euler method works. Instead of dCa dt, I treat that differential term as a slope. If I define the time step, the change in time, I can therefore algebraically calculate what my change in Ca is. And then I can update the value of Ca at the next time step by considering the current value of Ca, and then I add the change in Ca with respect to time multiplied by that time step. Now before I go any further, I want to acknowledge that Excel is absolutely not the best tool to use for this application. However, if you don't have any sort of formal coding experience, it certainly works in a pinch. So let's give it a try using that differential equation I used as an example. Now we already know what the analytical expression is, so this will be a great way to test and make sure that we have done it correctly. The first thing I'm going to do is define values for my parameters, my K1 and my CA0. In real life, these would be your constant of the chemical reaction and the initial concentration of reagent A. So I'm just arbitrarily choosing values like 0.05 for K1, and we'll pick 5 for CA0. Next, I want to choose a value for the time step. So just as an initial guess, I'll use 0.1 here. And then I will define some values of t for which I want to calculate my concentration. So any time value after the initial time is going to be simply equal to the previous time plus the time step. Notice how I absolutely referenced the time step because I do not want that one to change as I drag down. Next, I'm going to define a column for my concentration, my CA and say that the initial value at time is equal to zero is equal to CA naught. Then what I want to do is define a column for DCA DT. So this is where Euler's method comes in. I'm going to calculate this strictly algebraically. My differential equation tells me that DCA DT is equal to minus K1 times CA. Pay careful attention to the cells I'm absolutely referencing. So K1, I want to remain constant, but CA, I want to change every time I calculate a new value. Now I say that the next value of CA is equal to the current value of CA, and I add the DCA DT term times the time step, just like I showed you in the slides. The final step is to drag and drop both formulas all the way to the end. Now I want to add a column to include the analytical expression for CA of T, because I know what it is. And this will be a great way to demonstrate how accurate Euler's method can be. Just following my formula that I've defined, CA is equal to CA0, absolutely referenced, of course, times exponent of minus K1, also absolutely referenced, times T, which is not absolutely referenced. And I drag and drop all the way down. So here's a plot of what the solutions look like. The analytical solution is shown as a solid black line, and the Euler data points are superimposed in orange markers. And you can see that at a time step of 0.1, I get really good agreement, and you can just barely tell uh, that there's a little bit of error with the Euler method. I can change that time step. So for example, maybe 0.05, and you can see how much better agreement I get with a smaller time step. Of course, I need to be plotting more data points to see the entire range but I think you get the idea. I can go the other way and use a time step of 0.5 and you see that my approximation gets much worse the greater my time step is. The take home message here is that Euler's method can be a reasonably accurate approximation for the analytical solution. And although it's not perfect, Microsoft Excel is a decent tool to use for this because it can perform these repetitive calculations very, very quickly. That will conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed watching and you learned something.